Biden sanctions Putin's spy chief, his deputy chief of staff, and multimillionaire Russian military bank CEO. President hits Kremlin inner circle and deploys more troops after slamming Russian leader for thinking he has a right to claim parts of Ukraine. So I guess today they, that Russia kind of upped the ante and said, you know, we're going to you know, occupy the entirety of these regions, even the parts that are controlled by Ukraine, because they're saying they're independent states. Biden, of course, comes out and responds. Putin, I guess, I, I, what did he say? That he was in a meeting and didn't bother yeah. watching what Biden had to say? Didn't hear it. This is, this is the first domino. Sanctions on specific people. If it, if it, it, it has to escalate beyond this, if we're going to see any, any of this crazy war right. stuff we've been talking about. So I guess right now, if this is what we're seeing, you know, Russia is putting troops in Ukraine. Do you see it? it, it do you see a strong possibility, Steve, of it escalating beyond just sanctions? Yes, because they've already been claiming that the Ukraines were shelling the separatists which there's, there's no proof of that. I don't know if you've seen the articles, but the, the separatists have been shelling into Ukraine. That we know for sure. We've seen the sides of kindergarten buildings with, you know, the, the hole in it. So, uh, again, we, got, we have all the propaganda ganda going on from both sides, right? But now you have actual Russian troops that you can say are being shelled. And if actual Russian troops are killed and they blame it on the Ukrainians, now we've just tipped another domino. It's amazing. Right. You can invade a country and then if you get shelled while you're invading, you blame it on the defenders for Right. This no, exactly. War. That's crazy. And look, we, we you know, we have people in the chat who are saying things like, "Oh, but they're independent regions, they have a right to declare independence." And so the question is, did these regions really declare independence? Mm. Now, so here's where it gets a little bit sketchy, and what I mean is if you can understand what happened when the Soviet Union took over, they russified all of the occupation countries that they were in. And so you had generations and generations that while they understood their heritage, they sort of felt Russian. And it wasn't all that bad. And then as the Soviet Union uh, breaks down and so they retreat back to the motherland, Russia proper, you've, you've get these generations who still have a kindred spirit with the Russians. And so that's what you're finding along the eastern border there with Ukraine. So the reason they're doing it this way, these are Russian-speaking people. This is what they speak every day. As you start getting closer and closer to Kiev, as you keep going more to the west, they stop speaking Russian the, the, and they start speaking Ukrainian. Well, the, right. In, in Kiev, though, a lot of people speak both, both. languages. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah. like when I would go to visit Lithuania from Belarus, they they so do not like the Russians that it's offensive to talk to them in Russian. <laughs> mm -hmm. But if they didn't know English, I had to fall back on my Russian in order for us to communicate at all. Russian. Right. Mm -hmm. So it, it, but they'd be like, Ugh, I hate to do this, but they would speak Russian with me. And, and so you get this. But that's because they were ran over. Right. I mean, the, the people who are in a bad way now are the Baltic states because uh, Putin has just annexed Belarus. You don't, I mean, there are articles about this, but nobody realized how important that is. The troops are never leaving Belarus again. You so what, Russian troops in Belarus? 30,000. That's how they're going to attack from the north if it would ever yep. happen. And this is actually what puts Kiev in such a, a, strong, a very serious, uh, harmful way. You want to know what really trips out Americans, I find? What's Kaliningrad. That? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Kaliningrad. Oh, isn't that unbelievable? <laughs> cool. But now that what gives you... Let me show you. Let me show you. Uh, Kaliningrad is south uh, of Lithuania and north of Poland. It's an enclave, right? It's a, it, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's Russia. Yes. Yeah. It, it's a Russian enclave. A piece of Russia. Right there in the, in the Baltic Sea. And uh, so if you're looking at... We got Moscow. We got Russia here. We got Belarus. We got Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania. And then most people don't know this. You show them a map and you ask them, hey, look at this. Right? <laughs> when, there's the, when it's like, there's, there's no word here. It's just this little carve out. What is that? And the people are like, I don't, it's Russia. Yeah. Wait, what? It's, it's Russia. Kaliningrad. Part. And now, and, and that's very militarized. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that's its only real purpose, right? Yep. Mm. And now by staying in Belarus, you now give air cover to Kaliningrad. 